play on their internet. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We are Droopy Lampshade, which is an independent team from all over the place. I'm Mandy Butler, and I live in South Carolina. I have been coaching this team since May um, when people were still figuring out how to do uh, internet improv. So these pioneers are here to entertain you with what they've been working on. You're going to see a mix. Those of you who are improvisers or are familiar with improv, you're going to see a mix of short form and long form in this show. So we're going to give you everything we've got. Before we do that, I want to thank Kale, our producer, and Queen City Comedy for giving us this platform on their Facebook page and in their stream. So please, uh, there's going to be some information that pops up during the stream. Check it out on the Facebook page. Please donate as much as you are able to spare. Yes, make it rain, make it sprinkle. Whatever you've got, we'll take change. There's a national shortage. So if you can donate, I believe there's a Venmo that's going to come up. Whatever you can spare, we would really, really appreciate it because theater is more important now than ever, it seems like, but also more in crisis now than ever. So help us be able to keep our hearts and eventually our doors open and be able to give you what you need, which is watching people interact in a nice, humane, and decent way. <laughs> so thanks for being here. Yay, 2020. We really appreciate you. And um, if you don't have any money to spare, you're still more than welcome. We will give you the ha-has for free. All right, so let's go around. We are going to hear where every is from as well as their name. So Joe, where are you streaming in from? The booming metropolis of Davidson, North Carolina, just north of Charlotte. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Joe. Davidson in the house. All right, Elizabeth, uh, where are you streaming in from? Marietta, Georgia. Woo woo. <laughs> Imad. Yeah, you're up, Imad. Charlotte, North Carolina. Awesome. Yay. Tony, what about you? East Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> ah, nice. Important distinction. There's a big rivalry there. Angie. <laughs> Detroit, Michigan. Woo -woo. Woo woo. Very, very nice. All right, Motown. Melanie, where are you streaming in from? Today, I'm in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Ooh. Where are you? Where do you normally hail from? Durham, North Carolina. Cool. Awesome. Globe Trotter, State Trotter. Very, very good. All right, Shada, where are you zooming in from? Right on the border of Chapel Hill and Carborough. Yay! In North Carolina. North Carolina. Those of you who don't have, yeah, if you don't have your Rand McNally out in front of you right now, that's also oh. in North Carolina. Brandon liked my Atlas joke. All right, Brandon, where are you zooming in from? I am zooming in from the QC, Charlotte, North Carolina. That stands for Queen City. QC, QCC, Queen City Comedy, get that wallet out and donate if you can. I'm going to keep plugging like we're on a little comedy telethon. All right, Ethan. Oh, oh, wait, before I go to Ethan, I do want to say this to you. Um, full disclosure, you're also paying the players because it is going to be split. Whatever you donate will be split among the players, not me, but the, play, the players on screen who are improvising, and then also split uh, with Queen City Comedy. So whatever you donate will Will be divided 10 ways um, among the nine players and Queen City Comedy being the 10th player. So you're also helping these uh, wonderful improvisers be able to say they're professional actors because they got paid. <laughs> so Ethan, go ahead, my friend. Uh, I, I am flattered from Carborough, North Carolina, and I'm originally from Michigan. Awesome. Yay! Very, very good. So let's go ahead and get started. And we are going to start with a short form game of buzzer with Angie and Brandon. So everybody else say bye and turn your cameras off. Awesome. So my friends, the way that this game works, it's called different things. If you have an improv background, there are so many regional differences. So it's called buzzer, should have said, uh, the ding game, new choice, more specific. There are, uh, Brandon, what did you call it? Uh, new option. 
new option. So there are so many different uh, names for the same game, and it <coughs> is predicated on this idea that you always are going to feel later, like there was something better you could have said or something more productive. Um, call it, and my French is terrible, but the French call it l'esprit d'escalier, which means the spirit of the staircase. That's all the French I know. So it means the spirit of the staircase. So you're walking away and you go, oh, I wish I had said this, right? It's very French. Oh, so um, this, I, this game is based off of that idea. So the players are going to have a scene. And in that scene, they might say something like, Brandon might say he went to the store, right? So Brandon would say, just say, I went to the store. I went to the store and... And I might go, ding, ding, ding. And then Brandon would say... I went to the car wash and there was... Ding, ding, a... ding. I went to the grocery store and fought an old lady. Yeah, and he'll just keep whatever the the final thing is that he doesn't get the buzzer sound on, he will justify and his partner will justify and it'll be like the things before it were never said, right? So we're just making sure that they're really uh, saying the things that they want to say, that they mean to say. So they get little do-overs and we'll see what happens in the world of their scene. My players have their microphones on so that they can be a live studio audit audience. So use them as a laugh track if you're watching this on the Facebook stream. And if they are laughing, that means you can be laughing too. Whoa. So, <laughs> so oh, <laughs> there we go. All right, very, very good. So I am going to turn my camera off, but still listen for my ding. Um, but before we get started, I need from the players who are not on stage and maybe Kale, so something from the chat. Um, if you can tell me, let's see. Um, what is a wholesome PG-13, which is the rating for this show, incidentally? What is a wholesome PG-13 oh. activity that Brandon and Angie could be doing together? Brandon and Angie, bird watching, bird watching. So that is the first thing I saw in the chat. And I say PG-13, but we can be a little racy. I say, I say PG-13 to these guys the way that my friends tell me uh, that we need to be somewhere at 7 when we really need to be there at 7.30, right? So I'm telling them PG-13 so they don't go past an R rating. So really, audience, you should know that we're about at an R rating if we're being real. If, I, if, if past is prologue, they're going to get a little blue on you. All right. And by they, I mean Brandon. All right, so we are going to see this buzzer scene and me. We're going to see this buzzer scene inspired by bird watching in three, two, one. Clifford, I hear them. I hear them. They're nearby. Debbie, I'm scared. I'm scared shitless. I was the oh. Well, what are we even doing out here? This is the yeah. dumbest bet we've ever taken on. I, we just, it was important that we went out here and faced our fears and found the dino birds. Ding, ding, ding. It was important that we came out here and fucked up that beaver dam up the road. Ding, ding, ding. It's important that we burn down this forest because environmental ding, ding, conservation. Ding, 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 ding. It's important that I find a bird and make it my own. <laughs> I just, I just think it's really important that we've got a bird that can kind of pull us together and allow our relationship to take flight, like metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Clifford, I love how you make puns like that after my heart. I, I mean, if this, is what it, if this is what it takes for us to be in love forever, I can do it. I can get over my fear of these. Ding, ding, ding. I can't get over my fear of these. Ding, ding. I can get over my fear of these. Ding, ding. Damn, baby, you've got them dance moves that I've never thought I'd see. Oh, keeping it inside for you this whole time secretly. I love birds. I love you. And I just need to dance. Well, hot damn. Dang. That's really unattractive. Dang. Well, yeah, let me do the thing too, you know? <laughs> Dang Brandon's dance. 
All right. I don't see why, why not. We just keep doing this, right? That's it, Clifford. You dance like the inside ostrich that you have. Ding, ding, Angie. You dance like the like the crocodile in your pants. Ding, ding. You dance like you're a salmon upstream. Well, you know, I'll always uh, push past the resistance to, to get to where I'm trying to go. That's and that. that's you. Me? Oh, yeah. Ding, so that, oh, yeah. Ding that, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Ding. All right. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. I've always had a secret affinity for the Kool-Aid man, and you sound just like him. I'll break down any wall to get to your coochie, baby. Well, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I bulldozer and break any wall with, with whatever mean necessary. Attaboy, Clifford. You've got the sexiest name and the sexiest being in all the land. Fuck yeah, Debbie. <laughs> Say it with meaning. Ding, meaning. ding, Angie. Say it with meaning. Ding. <laughs> Say it with meaning, my love. The, oh, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to take from that last, uh, <laughs> last gesture, but I'm go, go I'm so sorry. She, she, it's the dino bird. It's coming right for us. She, ding, 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 ding. I'm about to fuck that bird up. That thing. <laughs> very, very good. Um, this scene was not approved by PETA. All right, very, very good. Thank you so much, Brandon and Angie. Uh, coming, let's go ahead and give them a hand. Coming to Yay. the stage now. Yay! We have Tony, Melanie, Elizabeth, and Ethan. Tony, Ooh. Melanie, Elizabeth, and Ethan. All right, so this next game, Tony's going to host. But before I turn it over to him, I'm going to explain it a little bit. So this game is called Good, Bad, Worse. And it is a game that is designed to help you uh, answer those burning, burning life questions. And so as the title of the game suggests, you might get some really good advice. You might get some not so good advice and you might get some advice that might land you in jail and or on the six o'clock news. So Tony is going to take it away and he's gonna be getting those burning questions from the chat, the players who are not currently in the, uh, in the show right now. Well, they're in the show, but they're not in the game. So Tony, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to you and you are gonna host this expert panel of good, bad, worse. Thank you so much. Uh, hello folks, how are you today? Are you like me? Do you have deep burning existential questions that you're too afraid and socially awkward to ask your friends and family? Well, I have a treat for you. I have assembled an expert panel of folks that are here for your burning deep, deep questions and advice seeking. Let's get straight to it. Let's meet our panelists. Uh, I want to introduce our first panelist. Go ahead and let us know about yourself. Hello, sir. My name is Agent Gertrude McGillicuddy. Uh, federal agent for the FBI for 25 years now. In my spare time, I enjoy performing in musical theater and pruning my bonsais. <laughs> wow, wow. Great hobbies. Thank you so much. Let's move on to our uh, next panelist. Please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Veronique and I am an international spy. And I have been uh, working in the U.S. for about uh, 10 years now. Wow, that's interesting. You may not want to incriminate yourself. We have an agent in the house. But uh, let's move on to our third and final panelist, please. Oh, hey. Uh, my name's John. Uh, I'm a deli and cheese manager over at a, a, a grocery store. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, my spare time, I... Uh, I like to I like to do some trap shrugs and rack pulls and uh, I do a lot of lifting. Yeah, that's kind of what I do. 
Wow, wow. Uh, you are in no way out of your depth with an agent and a spy. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, all right, folks, let's get straight into it. Uh, I, I have some questions generating right now. Uh, let's see what we can answer here, how we can help out the general populace. I have a great first question. Somebody wants to know why they are not advancing at work in the manner that they should be. So uh, what, what's your advice for advancing at work, kind of moving up to the next level? We'll start with you, Agent M McGillicuddy, was it? That's correct, McG McGillicuddy. Well, first of all, you want to make sure you're following protocol. Um, every position is going to have a, a protocol to follow. And you also want to make sure that you're following up with your supervisors. And yes, following up with your supervisors. Oh, great. Great. Thank you so much. Makes sense. Uh, let's move on to uh, our spy in the house. Was it Ver Veronique? Veronique, yes. And I don't think that the first person gave you a very good answer. You really have to cheat and you have to look at the code of conduct and you just do whatever you can to get around it. Oh, wow. Okay. Cut a few corners. I can appreciate that. Last but not least, uh, <laughs> Delhi manager, John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, hey, hey. Uh, boy, you know, uh, God, those, those answers were so dumb. I mean, my God, I've never heard dumber answers, but look, the thing, Thing you got it. You just do what I do, okay? Like, I, I mean, hard work pays off, but you know, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta work your butt off. And like, you know, I come in at uh, four, five, six in the morning, and uh, you know, I, I chug down some meth. I, I do some, uh, some uh, monster energy drinks with it. I get at least three of them in, you know, and uh, you know that just powers me through the day. And then when you know you get off work, you know, you don't stop thinking about work. You, you got your phone on you, which hopefully is like something big, like a Samsung Note. And then you do some trap shrugs and maybe like a tire flip or two or, or uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know, barring that, maybe you just sleep with the boss. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess now we know the secret to Jimmy John's success. Um, let's move on to another question. They're, they're coming in hot here. Uh, very burning, meaningful questions. Uh, I, I, have a, I have somebody here who wants to know how they can take better care of the environment. Very hot topic. How, how can we do better individually to take care of our environment? Uh, Agent, Agent McGillicuddy? Agent McGillicuddy, thank you. Taking care of the environment is uh, it's very important, obviously. You wanna make sure you uh, recycle everything that you possibly can. I personally have five different recycle bins in my home. Um, you also want to make sure that you leave less of a carbon footprint. That's really important. Um, like you could buy a Tesla. That's a good idea. Great, great. Mission accepted. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to Agent uh, Veronique. Well, I don't think the first person really knows what she's talking about, McGillicuddy. I I think you really need to go into every country you can and take what you can and make as much profit as you can <laughs> and then see what happens after. Wow, wow, very advantageous. Thank you so much. Last but, but not least, <laughs> Delhi manager John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my last name's Mueller if you want to, you know, say it. Uh, you know, you know, uh, gosh. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, you know, the environment's fucked. I don't really think there's much you can do, but you know, I, I drive around a big truck and I drive it very fast and I, you know, big, big is my thing. Um, but hey, if you really want to, you know, do something to the environment, meat is delicious and meat, you know, that, that could be one thing. But you know, from what I understand and my limited knowledge of it is uh, you, it, it's really just the bigger corporations that are really the big, you know, problem things in the environment, you know, so like, why don't you just go and, you know, uh, uh, blow one or two of them up? <laughs> oh. All right. Wow. Uh, hopefully we have some Kaczynski fans in the audience. Um, <laughs> I think we have time for one more burning question. There's so many great ones here. Uh, I'm going to try to pick a good one. Oh, this is a fantastic one. Universal. Happens to the best of us. What if somebody wants to know, what if they fall out of love with their spouse? Uh, what, what advice do you have for somebody in that situation? Please, uh, Agent, Agent McGillicuddy. Nice. I highly, highly recommend couples counseling. 
it has really been helpful in my own relationship. Um, sometimes you can think you're falling out of love, but really you just need to come back together and connect. <laughs> ah, you're hitting home agent. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to uh, Spy v Veronique. Veronique, yes, and no, 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 no. She, McGillicuddy, has it all wrong. All you need to do is take on the different persona and have affairs with different people all over the world. So then you are happy wherever you are, any, any time that you are there. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, there's quite some things to unpack there. Thank you. Very, very valuable. <laughs> Last but not least, the... Uh, the uh, assumed lady killer, um, Delhi manager, John. <laughs> it's like he took the words right out of my mouth, boy, howdy. Uh, I mean, really, if you fall in love, I mean, the, the solution is you don't. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, last summer when I bagged like 15 different chicks, you know, it's like you just go to like a German house meeting and you just, uh, you know, you get a little drunk, you just see a cute and you're like, hey, you know, how we go home? And then, you know, after a while, they get a little bit annoying and you're just like, well, I mean, why don't you let, don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out? But you know, hey, uh, that uh, uh, what is love? <laughs> and you should be a spy. Yes, yes, I think you should. I, I have a whole new appreciation for the Delhi section. Thank you so much to our esteemed panelists. I learned a lot. I hope everybody in the audience did as well. Thank you, Chase. Uh, we got stinky cheese. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. That was so enlightening. I feel like I learned so much uh, what not to do, what to do, but mostly what never, ever, ever to even think of doing. So thank you so much, everybody. Yay. That was good, bad, worse. All right. So next we are going to see Brandon, Melanie, Imad. Joe, Tony, and Shana. Go ahead and all of you turn on your cameras for just a second. So Brandon, Melanie, Imad, Joe, Tony, and Shana. So one thing that we have developed, the more that we have worked together on this improv team is something called group mind. And, and what group mind is, is when you anticipate the moves of your partners, you, uh, you are so gelling that you just, you could improvise with your eyes closed, with your hands tied between behind your back. You just know each other that well. So what you're about to see, and before you see it, I want to show you something. This is the information, what? yes. So if you would like to donate Venmo at Queen City Comedy, that's one word all together. Here's the phone number. I have, this is my actual telephone. So like, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. That's my dog. It's his birthday today. Um, so I, uh, I don't understand how this works. So I think I copied it correctly. Sorry if I'm doxing you. I learned that word from my students. So um, this is Venmo at Queen City Comedy. That is a phone number that, that they also wrote. Uh, and so if you need a phone number to pay via Venmo, that's how you do it. And then PayPal at Queen City Comedy, that's also one word. Uh, they don't need an email address, I guess. Every time I've PayPaled, I've needed an email address. So if I'm saying this wrong, Kale, correct me in the chat, because I don't know internet. So that's how you can pay if you are so moved. That is our digital hat for you to put your dollars in as though we are modern day street performers in the time of coronavirus. So, oh yeah, there's stuff. There's stuff he just put on the screen and that's much better than my whiteboard because I'm a hundred years old. All right, so thank you so much, Kale. Okay, so we have six players on the screen and going back to this concept of group mind, we know each other so well that we, we know how to finish each other's sentences. We know what scenes are going to be like, right? So to that end, the first group, Brandon, Melanie, and Imad, go ahead and wave, Brandon, Melanie, and Imad, they are gonna do a scene together. And in our Zoom equivalent of a soundproof booth, Tony, Shana, and Joe, go ahead and wave, are going to watch with their speakers off. 
So they're going to be able to see what Brandon, Imad, and Melanie are doing. And I promise they are going to have their speakers off um, because it's probably going to be awkward when they try to turn them back on. <laughs> so they are going to have their speakers off. They're going to be able to see what Brandon, Imad, and Melanie are doing. And they are going to be able to recreate just off of watching, not hearing, the exact same scene line for line, offer for offer, dialogue for dialogue, moment to moment, a carbon copy. That's the check I'm writing that they're about to cash. So this is two groups, same scene. So I'm gonna ask Joe, Tony, and Shana to wave goodbye and turn your cameras off. And go ahead and turn your speakers off as well. Awesome, so let me know in the chat um, it, when you, if you can hear me, uh, when you're, when you've turned them off and if you haven't, I'll check for you. So I'm going to write in the chat. You can't see me audience, but I'm writing. Let me know. This is uh, accountability. Let me know when you have your speakers off. <clears throat> Tony sucks. <laughs> Tony's the worst. All right. So Shana's speakers are off. We have confirmation of that. So we are waiting on confirmation from Joe. Tony and Joe. Joe is off, so we're waiting for Tony to let us know when his speakers are off so we can. <laughs> Tony, all right, so cool. Uh, Tony wrote off, ellipsis, sorry. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get that get. So if you are not in the second group and you're not in the group of improvisers on screen right now, so that should be three of you, two of you, cause one of you real talk is taking your dog out right now. So the two of you who are not in this game and are not taking a puppy outside, please go ahead and respond to the uh, prompt. So um, these three people know each other and they've known each other for a long time. They are doing an activity outside. What is that activity, chat? What is that activity that they are doing outside? They're golfing, they are golfing. So you are people who have known each other, maybe your relatives, friends, whatever. I don't know how you know each other, but you do know each other and you are golfing. And we are gonna see this physical, fun, specific golfing scene twice, cause we're gonna see the same scene again. So let's see this scene in three, two, one. <sighs> this golf cart is so much fun. Whoa, yeah, dude. Slow down a little bit, Brandon. Okay, okay. Oh, let's stop here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. pretty bougie of us to get a golf cart to play frisbee golf. I know. Right. <laughs> <sighs> nice. Got it. Nice, man. Oh, damn. Check out this underarm. Wait, he just caught your frisbee. Dude. This is, no, it's disc golf, not ultimate frisbee. It's a different game. Oh, I believe you did that. Well, we've just been playing golf all these years. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Okay. Oh. Lisa, I'm sorry. George, try again, try again. I feel ah. really bad. I shouldn't have set you both up on a blind date like this. That's really, <laughs> you know. It seemed, to be, it seemed to be compatible. And then he picked up my disc. <laughs> well, not, not it, but. I love your disc. Yeah, my disc goes really, goes really fast and hey, George, impactfully. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. Do you think we're so far? I mean, we could try, you could try. Okay. Okay, I, I really questions? think you guys have potential. You should, you should, Lisa, yeah. Give me, a, give me your disc. Give me your disc. Here comes my disc. Ah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, I got your disc all right. Got oh. it in my, got it in my, my pocket. You guys are so cute. Look at you. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and my new group, come on out. My second group, come on out. 
turn your speakers on. Can you hear me, Tony? Yes. Can you hear me, Shayna? Yes. Can you hear me, Joe? Yes. 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 And Joe's going <laughs> to. Joe's about to weed eat his way through this scene. All right, so we are gonna see the exact same scene in three, two, one. You can't ride in my little red wagon. You can't ride in my little red wagon. The wheel is broken and the axle's dragging. Come on, Dad, sing with me. I, I, I have a bit of a cold. I don't wanna cough all over you, but I'm gonna hum along with you. Come on in. Okay, what I need to do, I, this is this is spectacular, Janice and Bill. Uh, I need to get a drone launched in the air so I can film this from above. So uh, there we go. Oh, okay. Now it's it's up. You should see it on your on your um, on your play by play. Dad. Janice. Why is the neighbor always spying on us? I just have to get that <laughs> edit sometimes, you know. <laughs> Okay, what? Well, hey, I can do this. There's a future. I see a future for both of you. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, well, while you do that, I just, I'm a little thirsty. I, there was no more juice in the fridge, so I stole one of your, uh, one of your apple juice cans. It smells a little weird, but I'm going to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely his dog's pee. Okay, I got to get this on. <laughs> oh my God, there's bees everywhere. <laughs> What? You did think it? How did you not like my drone footage? Come on, you guys. Oh, they're everywhere. Those aren't bees. It's your drone. Micro drones. It's oh, the way. Man. For some reason, I see two of the drones uh, uh, up top, two of the same ones. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'll save you from this. I feel kind of awkward punching the air like this because the drones are so much higher than me. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, Melody. I, I, I believe in you. I don't, I don't really, I don't know what more I can do to convince you two that I, your, that I have no ulterior motives. <laughs> I'm like pulling something over there. Yeah, I would get it all <laughs> everywhere. Oh, ow. there's a whole swarm of them. I just—you will never get away from my drones. Neither one of you. Uh, that's a little too controlling for parenting. I'm just saying that. P please give us more independence. Always, always. I, I think, you know, I can't. <laughs> You've got me at a loss for words, both of you. Yeah, I and, don't like it. And, <laughs> and scene. Okay, that was eerie. It was so close. It was so exactly the same. All right, so my first group, turn your cameras back on and Shayna, come back. All right, so my first group, tell your second group, uh, what were you doing? We were frisbee golfing. Oh, so very, very close to bees and drone footage. Just very, very <laughs> close. <laughs> very nice work, everybody. Give you guys a hand, yay. All right, so now we're gonna shift gears into long form. So everybody turn your cameras back on. If your cameras aren't on, yeah, there we go, awesome. I hope Piper enjoyed her walk, Ethan. He didn't have much of a walk, but she did have a nice pee. Oh, well, that's good. That's the most important part of the walk. You just uh, gave her the highlights, right? It's like the greatest hits. All right. So again, this there's my ring light, but there you Whoa. go. If you like to, I know there it is right there. It's so exciting how Kale can just pop that on. Um, cool. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Wow. 
Yes, please, please, please. Uh, donations would be so appreciated for the theater, Queen City Comedy, and also for the players uh, so that everybody just feels really good about themselves and continue to pay for classes to be able to get their improv skills and also be able to offer shows like this to an audience. So very, very good. Thank you so much, Kale. All right. So now we are going to shift gears into long form. And if you're a novice, if you're new to improv, it's your first show maybe, let's explain a little bit about what the difference is. So short form, like you just saw, it's game-based. It's like, whose line is it anyway? It's a lot of people's first introduction into improv, right? That game-based structured format that we play in. Long form is more scene-based, narrative, character-driven, um, and that sort of thing. So what you're about to see is a montage, but it's a specific type of montage that is inspired by stories that the players will tell at the beginning. So a montage, just like in a Rocky movie, is a series of vignettes and scenes that may tie in together, may be repeated, characters might come back, they may not come back. We might see Apollo running on the beach, and we'll, then we'll see uh, Rocky punching the meat and then we see Apollo on the beach again. I'm mixing up two movies. Don't care. Rocky is one movie to me, one giant long movie. So uh, just like that, we will see characters come in, we'll see them come back, we'll see repetition of ideas, repetition of themes, or we may only see one character one time, right? It's a series of scenes that are unrelated until they're related. <gasps> what? You'll see what I mean. All right. So in order to inspire the players, for this montage, they're going to tell uh, stories that will be the source material for everybody else. And so your word, let's get a suggestion from Kale. Kale, what is one word that can inspire the player's stories and their montage? Holiday. Holiday. That's such a timely one. Very good. What a great suggestion, Kale. So Kale says holiday. That is going to be our suggestion. And so it's whatever it means to you. We're going to tell stories for about three minutes and then we'll start a montage and just a friendly reminder to the players that tag outs, sweeps, brave, bold edits, um, strong characters, just all, the, everything's on the table. Walk-ons, everything's on the table. Just listen to each other and have a good time. All right. Cool, cool. So uh, we have three minutes to tell stories. Who's got a story inspired by Holiday? I see Elizabeth's hand and then Joe will be next. So this Holiday word reminds me of when I was a little kid and I took a holiday with my dad and my brothers and we went up from Chicago all the way to the Rocky Mountains and we tried to climb a mountain in an old car. Well, it didn't really work too well. We got stuck in the mud. We had to call for a tow truck and have somebody drag us out with a big chain. And then when we got higher up the mountain, we saw snow. We stopped on the side of the road for a moment and my father opened the front hood of the car and it exploded all over him. And he had like third degree burns all over his body. <clears throat> then we finally got to our relatives and hung out for a little while. And unfortunately, we had to go back there three days later after we had left for a funeral. And not to mention that the whole trip started in the car with all these little bags of like vegetable, dried vegetables and fruit and peanuts. And um, everybody's driving and the windows are down and we're eating all this food. And all of a sudden I say, dad, it's raining. And then I said, dad, it's pink rain. Well, I realized my brother was vomiting out the front window and it was coming all in the back window. Anyway, it was, it was a holiday to remember. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Sure. All right. So Joe, uh, your turn. <laughs> On the other hand, <laughs> um, I was uh, my Junior at uh, Appalachian State uh, was working uh, as a delivery driver for a uh, Asian restaurant that was right across campus. Great people, which is kind of part of my point. I they were were open even though through Thanksgiving it was coming up on Thanksgiving break, and I, with the blessing of my parents, because I yeah it's just a holiday we can do that later. I stayed late. Uh, over Thanksgiving break after everyone already gone home and made deliveries from for them. And to thank me, uh, once they closed for the day, they invited me. It was a family uh, uh, 
um, Asian family at the owned the restaurant, did the cooking, you know, authentic. Uh, but to thank me for staying late, they invited me to stay late and have Thanksgiving Thanksgiving dinner with them uh, at the restaurant. It was really cool. They had like some Asian lobster thing. It was awesome. That's so nice. All right, we have time for one more story, Ethan. Uh, so this is gonna be quick. I a few oh my gosh, almost ten years ago, I worked in the film industry, and for one job, we flew down to Florida um, to do a shoot with the picture of the Detroit Tigers and all this other stuff. Um, so we get there and we pull into this uh, motel, uh, and to get to this motel, we crossed just a number of strip clubs, like <laughs> more than I've ever seen in my life. Um, and when we get to the hotel, like a number of people's rooms are not made. Um, I think one guy said that he found blood on the walls in his bathroom. Um, and then another guy, <laughs> this was the best one. Another guy opened the door and there was just a woman hanging out and uh, pretty certain that she was a prostitute waiting for a client. Um, so needless to say, we all, uh, oh, by the way, we flew down from Michigan. So we were all in like winter gear, but it, of course, cause it's Florida, it was like 90 degrees in January. Um, so needless to say, we all like packed up our stuff and found a different hotel. Uh, but because of a bunch of other things, the shoot was delayed a week. So we kind of got like a week vacation in Florida that also wasn't very fun because we were just with coworkers and clients the whole time. <laughs> This is a little much longer story that I can tell sometime, but uh, that, that was the point I wanted to get to. Very, very good. Wow. So there's a lot to pull out. I will say, uh, players, remember to pull out themes and ideas. We don't need to no. see. We had two stories that involved bodily fluids. Maybe we don't need to see those as literally, <laughs> right? All right. So uh, we are going to see uh, this montage inspired by our story. So go ahead and turn your cameras off. Good, we are gonna see it in three, two, one. Babe, I... <sighs> Fuck the whole family. Babe, babe, come back. We're, we're gonna do this in front of the family. Really? We're gonna do this today? Yeah, yeah, J Johnny, you don't have to stop drumming if you don't want to. Uh, we're, yeah. Um... Okay, Johnny doesn't have to stop drumming, but you don't care about me, Dad. Thanks a lot. No. Careful with the tone with your father, young man. You show him some respect. You should have thought about that when he adopted me. I'm sorry. Well, you listen to your mom. Jean, just, just, just tell them, tell them what's happening because I can't sit here and listen to this, this, this acting like we don't know, all know what's going on. Yeah, gee, Dad, sorry. Come on. Just spit it out. What are we even doing here? Oh, Johnny finally speaks up. Mm. Okay. Oh, is, uh, are you so, literally no, deflecting? No, You're the no, one started no, this. No. All right, listen. We're, we're, we're all in a fight. We're all in a fight, okay? We're all in a fight. We're all in a fight. It's you don't crazy. sound like we're in a fight, which makes me want to be more in a fight. Okay, I, again, I, you're, you're shouting. Please, please, please. Uh, babe, it would be great if you also, you know, did the backup again. You know, the <laughs> listen to your dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, kids were getting a divorce. Oh, <laughs> uh, you cut, thank goodness! You cut the legs out under from under oh, me. Oh, yeah. thank God! Don't <laughs> <laughs> your fucking drumming all the all hours of the day. You can't. Oh. But you know what? Here's uh, here you go, Gene. This part I didn't tell you. I've got myself a girlfriend. <laughs> Boom. That's what's up, mom. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. Not like this bozo. My dad, I don't even think, I, I'm surprised my dad was able to produce two children. You know? You're, you're saying this like I'm not standing right here. No, I'm very, very cognizant of our spatial distance. Okay. Uh, Always okay. has been. I'm going to try something on since I'm now going to be new to this whole single parenting thing. <laughs> uh, I can't hear about mom, but go, you... go to your room. Oh, see, I thought you were going to try having balls for once, but then you pulled oh. that move. I, got... I get it. I get it, Dad. He's got you, Dad. <sighs> so, boys. I don't like yeah. this. What's up, Mom? Take your father and go hang out at a lesbian bar. Sure. <laughs> 
edit, edit, edit. Edit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just uh, we're high in the air and I don't take many flights. But yeah, we, we can talk about quarterly one reports. Johnson, it's fine. <laughs> Smith, or can I can I get you some water? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Give me a water and uh, put some Jack Daniels in it while you're at it. Okay. I'm I'm very happy with our productivity. You know, Mr. Here, I want to talk about the methods that worked and, and didn't work. Yeah. The engineering department's been working overtime, sir. That's. I'm. I made a report. Maybe I. Maybe I can show you. Yeah. Yeah. That. that that's fine. We, we. We can. We can go over methods and, and things like that. Just don't. Don't make too many jerky movements right now. I don't think I can I, handle it. I. I spent like all night making this, and I know we're up in the air, but yeah. So if you just pay attention. Excuse, excuse me, Santa, we're on a, we're on a tight schedule. Um, you, Rudolph, <laughs> you're going to need to, you're going to need to kick it into high gear. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. One. I'm going to speak okay. it double time now, sir. Okay. okay. So as you, as you see over here, GDP has gone up, which means kids are expecting more expensive presents. <laughs> They're not happy with fidget spinners anymore. So I came up with a proposal. All little girls get a diamond ring. And in keeping with the political climate, all little boys get an AR-15. <laughs> oh, edit, 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 edit. <laughs> no, you guys are right. All the elves get all the good jobs. Like what are, what are we supposed to do as gnomes this time of year? <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree. These red bastards always get all the favorites. <laughs> I mean, they get the, get the shoes. They get the cookies. They get they the, get Christmas. The they little half. The murder is what they do. We see that they're in the Home Depot clearance aisle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they're not giving us enough money to really do our job right. Oh, gnome. Oh. oh, how cute. Maybe one day. Fuck you! Man, I'm, I'm sick of standing around in gardens all the time. Like, why can't we do something exciting? We're, we're exciting people. I mean, gnomes. Yeah, we get to travel a lot. And um, we're really popular on Instagram. Ooh. You know, I'm just excited about, I'm happy that I'm here with the two of you that see there's a bigger picture, bigger future for us gnomes. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. You're right. We can have big dreams. Yeah, Jenny, we could we could be like a special gnome team and, and maybe be a special team for Santa and, and like take over the elves. The G team. Ooh. Ooh. I like that one. <laughs> oh bye jenny damn it charlie now it's just you and me i i know i, I was kind of we were just forming a family i felt <laughs> hey you guys i work for travelocity i'm looking for some mascots you interested Mark, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the food dehydrator and our work Secret Santa. I love it. I, I mean, that's what I did all over winter break was just dehydrate everything. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's no problem, Denise. Uh, I'm really happy that you spent your entire Christmas break dehydrating food, you know, by yourself, not me there. <clears throat> uh. Uh, Mark? sounds like there's something you want to talk about um so i think yeah. we should talk about it yeah i mean i i got that dehydrator for you i guess you know hoping that we could dehydrate together 
<laughs> you know, just like. Well, you know. Tag I out Shayna. Tag out Shayna. So if you're shopping at Bed Bath & Beyond for that special lady, don't get her anything frilly or lacy or special in that department. Get her a food dehydrator. <laughs> yeah. That's it's a just, huge aphrodisiac. Nothing turns a chick on like dehydrated food. Just like sucking all the fluid out of vegetables and vegetation just really gets them going. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's how my husband landed me. He was like, listen, let's go to your place and dehydrate a whole bunch of food. And tag, I tag out Brandon, tag out Brandon, tag out Brandon. Hey, how about we uh, go back to your place and, uh, you know, dehydrate some food. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. That's not what I was thinking. Uh, but Hey, you know, is that code for something? Uh, it can be if you want to. Sorry, I'm embarrassed. I should probably put my clothes back on. <laughs> I got Mandy and Ethan. Bring back Shayna. So, like, you know, I know that you know what this means, right? Um, that, you know, I'm trying to increase my fiber. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's kind of embarrassing that I need to do that. I'm so, you know, pretty, but. Right, tag out Shayna, <laughs> tag out Shayna, tag out Shayna. Bro, I was, I thought, I told you the dehydrator was like the way to get with the chick. Like what happened? Man, I, I, I asked her if I could give her my celery stock and it just didn't go as planned. <sighs> God, I hate this. Tag out Ethan, tag out Ethan. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm so sorry. I cannot accept this return. This is Look, just, what have you done with this? I, you, you know, the person utilizing it, they've, they've got a, they've got some GI issues. It went up there once, but only once. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to call the police. <laughs> edit, 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 edit. <laughs> Dad. Um, I, I, I have to, there's something I have to tell you. Okay. It means a lot to me. Okay. Yeah, Bob, you seem a little worried. Spit it out. I don't want to be an elf. I want to be a prostitute. What? Yeah. I'm, I'm tired of like slaving away for no money with no union representation Shh. and just giving... <laughs> Santa might hear you. I mean, if I'm going to be exploited, like I want to at least like get some money for it, right? Tag out Iman, tag out Iman. So you want to be a stripper at the uh, North Pole, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that despite my diminutive nature and uh, uh, predilection to just making toys, um, I, I, I'd be very good at this. Yeah, okay. I'm sexy. Absolutely. Oh, we have people who are into that. Don't worry. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about your qualifications, though? I mean, toys are toys are OK, but um, what else what else you got? Um, uh, 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 a, a can do spirit and um, a, a, a strong need for unionization and um, 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 bringing holiday cheer. Okay. Yeah, you're just what we're looking for. I think uh, I think the reindeer are really gonna like you. Re reindeer? Yeah, that's our clientele. Oh, and a couple of penguins. Uh, oh. <laughs> cut okay. cut to the cut to the stripping at the club with the reindeer. Come on, Rudolph, get off, get off. It's my turn. Okay, so for the next act, I'm gonna make a, a Power Ranger. Oh, make that Power Ranger. Show us your Power Ranger. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not feeling very empowered anymore. <laughs> when do I get a private lap dance? 
no! <laughs> that, that's 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 forty an hour, and I make a jumbo size Power Ranger in front of you in a booth. Hey, baby, I heard you can do great things with my antlers. What what do you got? Uh, antler polish. Oh, oh, Oof. oh! Hey, I like that antler really? polish baby but can you can you make me a candy cane um i, I how about instead a puppy <laughs> so back, hot right now bring back ethan and melanie so i gotta say i was a little worried until you pulled the puppy out of your pants that was a really good move um oh I yeah think... yeah yeah it's just a little squirmer you know just a little cutie <laughs> yeah you're gonna need to bring the puppy every day if you want to keep this job i have to create new sentient life every single day yep okay well are you gonna adopt them? Am I gonna get, is this gonna come out of my pay or yours? Like it, it takes a lot for me to like make puppies. Like I, I, I'm still waiting on talking to a union rep. Tag out Melanie and bring back everybody else from the reindeer strip show. Oh, I see six puppies. Why don't you make me a billy goat? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, this is Penguin. Um, toy antlers. Huh. There's toy <laughs> antlers on this Billy Goat. Uh, oh. no. Yeah, dance, dance. <laughs> I don't do this very often, but will you marry me? Add it, add it. Man, dad sucks. Sorry, dad sucks or that sucks? Dad, like our father. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. no argument there. I'm upstairs and can hear you. Fuck right. <laughs> boys, boys, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what do you guys whisper to your girlfriends, you know, to work things up? I need a little practice. <laughs> oh, oh, what you do is you say, hey, uh, you want to. Get this veggie de you want to get this veggie dehydrator going? Oh, tag out Joe and Brandon. Yeah, I want to get this veggie dehydrator going. Ah, oh, um, that was a great pickup line, by the way. It's gonna sound strange, but I learned it from my sons. What? No, no, no. <laughs> you have kids. Awesome job, mom. Keep it up. Why is your why is your little uh, why is your son tw uh, twerking in the corner? <laughs> he's um he's practicing for this North Pole strip club he's trying to get a gig at. And yeah, it's it's a it's a reputable place. We've got a we've got a union. We've got union. Yeah, union. Cool. Tag out, Listen. tag out, it's, tag out, Angie and Mandy. Joe, get back out with Brandon. Guys, I need to bring this back, okay? Okay. I tried my best to not raise toxic masculinity in my sons, but it seems like that's what is happening. You gotta like, like I'm trying, I'm trying to reach you as as a dad. Like, you can't keep saying that all these masculine things are good. Look at the world out there. Look at what's going on. Like your mom is empowered now to get, you know, uh, the, the, vet, the, the dehydrating lesbians out there and, you know, son, like, I, I, but it's just like, <laughs> I'm trying to stop you before you go down a dark path too much. I can't speak for both of us much as I'd like to, but um, I, I think it's a matter of finding dad the right, uh, the right subculture you know the lesbians that like uh dehydrators you know and there there's uh women that like men that have never seen the inside of a you know gym or um uh, we're trying to build you up here yeah okay. and to add to what he said i just feel like you're just you're just projecting 
your life onto ours. And I've chosen my career path, even though you don't like it. You never supported me, but I don't want you telling me my masculine self to do with my body. Well, I, yeah. I, I am sub I, actually, I am supportive of your career choice of being a stripper at the North Pole. I mean, it, that's Out establishment. It's, it's a got, job. You're doing something. Yeah. And we've got a breakfast buffet that starts at 2 a.m. <laughs> tag out, uh, tag out all the boys. Bring back Angie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was willing to give you a second date, but uh, you should know that I don't need you or a man. I have my own food dehydrator to use myself. So, <laughs> oh well, of course you do. Of course you do. It's silly for me to assume that you didn't. I mean. You know, um, I just figured, you know, double the dehydration, double the fun. Hey, the call as sharper uh, image. Oh, oh I, I, I'm sorry, I heard a, a radio ad. Is that coming in through your filling? Yeah, actually, you know what? Oh, I left my Shazam open on my phone. <laughs> oh, okay. God, that was crazy. It was something about sharper image. Is that, know, is that even open? The last time I was there, they kicked me out because they were there was this powerful dehydrator right there, and I was just dehydrating to town. Oh God! If I had a dime for every time I got kicked out of Brookstone for humping a dehydrator, I would have a dollar. I know. It's been I know. Many times. <laughs> oh, get in there! Oh, Mr. Smith, Christmas 2020. I got the best idea. All you gnomes look on. It's a dehydrator. Oh my. Uh, this, <laughs> this is what people need this year. Are we at that point now? Are we really, have we reached that? This is level? the future of Christmas presents, guys. <laughs> Johnson, I pride myself on keeping a certain culture in the North Pole. You're fucking out of line, mister, okay? Is that even legal? Look, it's a little risque. It's a little risque, but it's a little. Mm -hmm. I'll show you tag how out, to Tag out work. everybody but Tony. Tag out everybody but Tony. Sweetie, Santa, we've been married for so long now. I, I know you're upset. But you have to change with the times, baby. That's not as racy as it used to be. It's it's hard. I, I I'm I've been used to certain things from a millennia. I, I it's I, I'm trying, okay. Okay, good. Don't judge them. There's been a sexual awakening, and if the kids want their food dehydrators, her, baby, I said sexual. You don't have to cover your ears, right? <laughs> There's a reason we don't have any children. We'll talk about that later. But <laughs> let them have their sexual awakening. A food dehydrator is not, I mean, it's not triple X. It's close. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try to keep a, a more open mind about things in the future. But can you put the pressure cooker down while we're talking? This is, this is a little distracting. I'm sorry, I just, um, I'll put the pressure cooker down, but I do have something else since the pressure cooker, maybe that's too much too soon, too much too fast. I bought a tiny little um, food dehydrator. I thought maybe we could try it um, tonight <laughs> when you get home from delivering all the presents. Make sure the shades are drawn when you say things like that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> tag, out, tag out Mandy, tag out Mandy. Oh, hey Kringle. Wait, how, how's, uh, how's it going with the old Mrs. Claus? It, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Nothing to everything's fine, okay? Did you hear something? Uh, uh, look, me, look, it's, it's just me, it's Krampus. You can tell me anything, like, come on, man. We, we're just, <laughs> come on, we're just kicking back. All right, well, give me another round of uh, candy cane juice and one for my associate here and we'll, I, I, guess, I guess there's no harm yeah. in telling you. He already knows. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, come on. We're friends. We're friends. This is, you know, I have nothing but good intentions for you, Kringle. Come on. Yeah, you know me. You know me. You know me. All right. All right, but you can't tell anybody, okay? We're, 
we're no, no, I won't tell anybody. Like, like it certainly won't be like the other hundred times. I, I promise. I right. will make sure of that. I got Good. your back. Good. All right. Well, listen, listen. We're 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 experimenting with an air fryer now. Uh. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it's accelerating at the same time. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I. I. Are you getting into the? Uh, Tag out Ethan and Joe. Okay, baby, taste that. Tell me you like it crispy. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Tell me that that flavor doesn't pop in your mouth. That's beer battered, son. That's beer battered. <laughs> <laughs> you make the best beer, but hey, hey! Crap. Gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> that, that's our montage everybody turn your cameras back on we have one more grand finale to say goodbye to you with thank you so much see how that all tied in together i've never thought that a food appliance was as sexy as that was so there i mean there was some racy racy holiday action going on up in there so speaking of racy this final game one more short form game for you is called sex with me. So this game is a joke template game. So uh, let's say that the suggestion is, um, uh, is hammer, right? So the joke might be sex with me is like a hammer. Uh, you're gonna get nailed, right? So it's just a punny, dirty, dirty, dirty. This is the R rated segment for sure. Um, a joke game. So sex with me. And before we play this and say goodbye, uh, Kale, if you want to turn your camera back on with the details on it. Yep. Queen City Comedy, PayPal, and Venmo, please, please, in the uh, square, I don't understand, I don't understand the internet, but yeah, if you guys want to, please, please, please go ahead and uh, donate if you are so moved, if you enjoyed your time with us today, we'd really, really appreciate it. All right, thank you, Kale, going back to the show. So this is going to be our sign off. So uh, in the chat, and uh, Kale, you're the only one left in chat. So Kale, what is a noun? that we can use for sex with me and players will raise our hands to get called on. What is a noun? Sex with me, a uh, person, bicycle. place, or thing. Bicycle. Bicycle. Oh, I was waiting for the chat and I should just shut up and listen to you. All right, so bicycle. So sex with me is like a bicycle. Who's got one? Yeah, and you can raise your people hand too. Yeah, Angie, go ahead. Sex with me is like a bicycle. It's best if there's a banana seat. Oh! Who else has got one? Yeah, Imad. Sex with me is like a bicycle. There's a chain involved. <laughs> oh, yes, Joe. Sex with me is like a bicycle. It works best with the tube inflated. Ah, Melanie. Sex with me is like a bicycle. You will certainly pop a wheelie. Woo, Angie. Sex with me is like a bicycle. We don't need the training wheels. <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, sex with me is like a bicycle. Things just keep spinning around. <laughs> Tony. Sex with me is like a bicycle. We're going to do it so long, we're going to wear through both rubbers. <laughs> Shayna. I have the same one as Angie. Oh. Uh, Ethan. Sex with me is like a bicycle. It needs to be well lubricated to function. Uh, sex with me is like a bicycle. If you're going to leave me in a bad part of town, you better chain me up good because somebody's going to take me home. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, Melanie. Sex with me is like a bicycle. If it's a long ride, your butt's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sex with me is like a bicycle. Uh, in Germany, two people ride at the same time. Oh. A two -seater. Uh, Imad. No, nah, that was related. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Joe. Sex with me is like uh, riding a bicycle. When I'm uh, coming down, I'm going to ring the little bell. Oh, Tony. <laughs> Sex with me is like riding a training bicycle. Don't take your hands off until I get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's get a new one. Um, let's get um, a job. Can we get an occupation, Kale? Uh, ambulance driver. 
ambulance driver. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. Who's got one? Yeah, Angie. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. It's fast and full of noise. Whoa, Melanie. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. You're going to end up in the ER. <laughs> oh. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. You need to be highly trained and hope your equipment works. <laughs> Joe. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. You've got to have PTSD, a very dark sense of humor, and a substance abuse problem. Whoa. Uh, Shayna. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. I don't follow any, follow any of the traffic rules. Whoa. Brandon. Sex with me is like an ambulance. Uh, you look dehydrated. I'm going to pump you up with plenty of fluids. <laughs> <laughs> Imad. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. You're going to see some pretty nasty things. <laughs> Tony, Tony, did you have your hand up? Did somebody take it? OK, Joe. Sex with me is like uh, sex with an ambulance driver. Oh, yeah, my partner's going to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth. Um, sex with me is like an ambulance uh, where it's going to be very fast. No oh. break. <laughs> Tony. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. Okay, I see why they call it a stretcher now. <laughs> <laughs> sex with me is like an ambulance driver. You're allowed to bring one other person. <laughs> Brandon. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. I'm going to wrap your body around with a tourniquet and inject you. <laughs> Imad. Sex with me is like an ambulance driver. You really should consider it a service. Oh, all right. So let's get an ING word, a gerund, a, a verb that ends in ING. What you got, Kale? Uh, caroling. Caroling, caroling. Sex with me is like caroling. Yeah, Angie. Sex with me is like caroling. Got to be with a group of people on strangers' porches. <laughs> Melanie. Sex with me is like Caroline. You'll hit a high note. <laughs> Brandon. Sex with me is like Caroline. After several hours of dutiful activity, your throat's going to hurt. <laughs> Sex with me is like caroling. Uh, you better be really good at what you're doing or I'm going to shut the door right in your face. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth. Sex with me is like caroling. Uh, even if you sing off note, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> Imad. Uh, sex with me is like caroling. I usually do it with Christians. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. Sex with me is like caroling. I just... And it's really like when my kids are there. <laughs> oh. Uh, Imad. No, I didn't have one. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ethan. I, I met Ethan. Yes. Uh, sex with me is like caroling. It annoys the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie. Sex with me is like caroling. The neighbors will be involved. <laughs> I was just going to say sex with me is like caroling. It's going to be so loud. The neighbors are going to take notice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's get one, one more, uh, one more noun, and then we'll close it out. Uh, record player. Record player. Uh, who's got one? Yeah, Elizabeth. Sex with me is like a record player. I'm gonna spin you around and then scratch you. <laughs> Ethan. Ethan. Uh, if, uh, if, 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 uh, sex with me is like a record player. It's just gonna skip if you don't put it on right. <laughs> Tony. Sex with me is like a record player. I can't seem to get my needle on the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> sex, sex with me is like a record player. I used to belong to your grandpa. Oh. <laughs> Imad. Sex with me is like a record player. Yes, that's wax. Uh. <laughs> Melanie. Sex with me is like a record player. It's vintage, but it still works. <laughs> Joe. Sex with me is like the regular player. Oh, 33 is not fast enough? How about 78? Tony! Sex with me is like a record player. I, I'm, I'm sorry I keep scratching. Sex with me is like a record player. If you play your cards right, you can get it for free in the dumpster behind the pawn shop. 
<laughs> All right, anybody else? Ivan. Sex with me is like a record player. It sounds great when I get my needle in the groove. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Sex with Me is like a record player. Um, a few decades ago, it was great family entertainment. Oh. All right, and that's our, that's our show. So everybody good. And I see Piper had an accident. I'm sorry, Ethan, we didn't quite oh, make did. it. <laughs> so we are, she's a brand new baby. All right, so we are going to sound off. So Tony, say goodbye. Tell us where you're streaming from. Goodbye um, from Charlotte. Thank you. Woo, thank you, Melanie. Goodbye from North Carolina. Brandon. Peace out from Charlotte. Joe. Later from Steph Curry country, Davidson, North Carolina. Imad. Bye bye from Charlotte, North Carolina. Angie. Thanks for watching from Motown. Take care. <laughs> Shayna. Goodbye from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Elizabeth. Bye from Marietta. <laughs> Did everybody go? I want to make sure because the cameras moved around. I just want to make sure everybody had a chance to say goodbye. Uh, Ethan. Goodbye from Carborough, North Carolina. Oh, he sounded so sad. Oh, he's so sad. I'm just thinking of my dog peeing and then Mandy forgetting. Imad <laughs> turned his, I didn't forget, Imad <laughs> turned his camera off and then all of the squares moved and I couldn't remember who was left. That's why I ask you not to turn your damn cameras off. All right, everybody. I love you. I love you, Imad. All right. I love you. Thank you for coming and joining us and donate to Queen City. Bye. Bye. Thank you.